Hello everybody and welcome to a quick tutorial. Today we're going to be learning how to actually create and use a DLL or a dynamic uh, link library in C or C++ uh, in Visual Studio 2019. So uh, what is a DLL? And we'll, like I said, it's a dynamic link library, um, but it's it allows people to uh, exchange source code um, uh, across different platforms for different projects. So uh, the same way that we're doing, uh, we're using DLLs in our uh, OpenGL project. So in, we have our header files in an in include folder here for GLM. Uh, and in the source directory, we have a glfw3.dll. So this is a dynamic link library that the project uses. So we're gonna go ahead and learn how to create one of these uh, for ourselves and uh, then use it in a project. So uh, I, I am going to be following instructions that I created here. Uh, this is on GitHub, uh, so you can follow these along yourself. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. So in Visual Studio in 2019, there's one package that you need for this. So it is uh, the Windows desktop development with C++. So this package right over here, um, and this actually allows you to Oh, uh, I screwed something up. Uh, but this actually allows you to um, to actually create Windows applications that are specific for, for Windows. And that's another thing. Uh, this is specific to Windows. This is not a Mac thing. DLL files are specifically for Windows 32 and Windows 64. All right, so make, if you make sure you have that installed, uh, next we can go into Visual Studio and we're gonna go ahead and create a new project. So click that. Uh, filter it to C++ and find a Windows desktop, desktop wizard. Uh, th this comes with that package that uh, you should have installed. So go ahead and click next. Uh, put it in a directory. I'm going to name it math library. Uh, the solution and product in the same directory doesn't really matter. Um, so go ahead and click create and it's going to give you this uh, dialog right here. Uh, so for application type, click, a, click the drop down menu and go to dynamic link library dot DLL uh, and then click an empty project and then we can go ahead and click OK and it will uh, create the project for us. So the first thing that we want to do uh, is create our DLL main entry file. Uh, so this is similar to int main in uh, exe projects. So just call it DLL main dot CPP. Uh, so here, this is just going to be the exact same thing as uh, a as the entry point for uh, an executable uh, pro program, except this is just going to be for DLL or a library. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to include our header file that we have not created yet. Um, but you can go ahead and just say include. Uh, and we're going to call it mathlibrary.h and we can go ahead and create that right now. Uh, so add a new item, header file, mathlibrary.h and then in mathlibrary.h uh, we're going to get rid of the pragma once comment, do the if and def mathlibrary.h define mathlibrary.h Get rid of that. Uh, make sure that they're spelled the same, and then end it. All right. So now we want to go ahead uh, and uh, define our uh, export uh, macros. Um, so the first thing we, we want to do is define uh, win thirty two lean and mean. This is not this is not pertain to meat. Uh, this pertains to our Windows library. So this just excludes rarely used things in Windows header. And in the Windows header, which we will include right now, so the Windows Windows header file. So that's just going to be include and then windows.h, just like that. And now we want to define our DLL macros. Um, so if defined math library exports. So if 
if exports is defined, we want to define a macro math library API as D E C L uh, spec and DLL export. So if export is defined, make sure that uh, the API is defined as exporting functions and then else. So if export is not defined, we're going to call it import. So define math library API as DECL spec DLL import and make sure that the DECL spec has two underscores in front of it and then end if. All right, so now we can go back into DLL, DLL main and we can complete this uh, header file. So once we have the header file included, uh, we can go ahead and create our uh, entry point for the DLL library. So it's gonna be a little similar to our executable main, so int main, but it has a lot more parameters and you don't have to understand this at all. Uh, this is complicated code, um, but it, it doesn't really matter. You can just develop your library normally without having to understand this. Um, all, you, all you do need to know is that it, it's where the DLL uh, starts. So, it's a, so the return type is gonna be bool and that's gonna be from the Windows header, it's all in caps, and then API entry and the function is called dll main in camel case and we're gonna have three parameters so h module h module uh, next we're gonna have d word uh, ul reason for call and then our last parameter will be lp void lp reserved and then for the actual function definition it's just going to be a single switch statement so switch uh, UL reason for call and there's going to be four possibilities so case DLL process attach case DLL process detach case uh, DLL thread attach and then case DLL thread detach and we're just going to go ahead and say break because you don't need anything for it uh, you can specify more. Uh, if you read more into this, you can uh, add some extra functionality, but for now, we're just gonna leave it blank. And then for the last line, just go ahead and say return true in all caps. All right, so now let's go ahead and define the functions and the uh, classes that we'll include in our library. So the first thing, the first one I'm gonna have is extern, C uh, math library API and I'm just gonna have add int a int b. Uh, so what it, what does this mean? Uh, so extern uh, C just tells it that it's a function that can be called without having to be in a class or a namespace. So it can just be called as add without having a type identifier in front of it. Uh, this math library API um, allows uh, or um, just tags this function as being exported or imported based on if exports is defined. Um, and then it's just a normal function after that. Uh, we want another function, extern c math library api print id, just like that. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, there is something wrong. Wait, no. Oh, I didn't put return types, that's why. Uh, int add and void print ID. I'm really smart, don't worry. All right, now let's create a class. So class, and then we have to tag it again. So math library API, and I'm gonna call it function. Uh, we'll just have a private constructor. And then we'll have three public methods. So public, uh, we're gonna have a void print. Uh, we'll have, and then we'll have a static, we're actually only gonna have two public methods. And we'll have a, a public static uh, generate function that returns function. All right, so now let's go into our source file. Um, so go ahead and create a new item 
and we're going to call it mathlibrary.cpp. And we want to include the header, just like that. And then we're essentially just going to do, and we're just going to essentially define the functions as if they were normal. Uh, we're not going to do, we're not going to add any extra tags uh, in the source file uh, because that's all done in the header. Uh, so the first one we have is uh, in add method. So it's going to be int add int a int b, and it's going to return a plus b. Okay. So that's the add function. Now the compiler will map add to, uh, it, it will map the header definition to the function body over here. All right, uh, that's extern functions. And I also want to talk about static variables. Um, so you can have static variables that are defined in the uh, sort in a source file and they are technically called uh, DLL internal state variables. So the way you do this is just say static int id and this can be accessed so long as you are in uh, scope of it so I can access id uh, from wherever I want in mathlibrary.cpp and I'm just going to define it as uh, 314159265454 for now and then we add a second function uh, called print id and that's going to be void so void print id and I'm just going to go ahead and uh, std cout uh, id end line, and then I'm going to add one to the id. Um, so this will demonstrate that we can actually access and modify those static variables in this function, um, in this DLL function. You can't access it outside of it, though. Uh, and then we just want to include our IO stream just so we can uh, print stuff. All right, and then now let's do our class. Uh, so function, our constructor function, function, just uh, print out constructor. Uh, we have another, uh, the second member with print. Uh, so void function print, scd and l or a standard C out uh, print function end line and then the last one we have is the uh, generate and it's going to be a static method but you're just going to defi define it the same way so return type of function and function colon generate and it's going to return a an empty function and we can just go ahead and call standard C out gen function. All right, so now everything is defined. Uh, all the functions have bodies. And we can go ahead and actually just build this. So we're going to go build a solution. And we get no errors, which is good. Uh, and if you go ahead and find the output folder, uh, you'll see that there's a DLL and a .lib file. So these are the most important there. Um, so yeah, now that we have our uh, now that we have our um, library created, let's go ahead and create our project that will uh, implement this this library here. Um, so keep this this file explorer open at that window. Uh, you can minimize it, and you can also close the solution for now. Uh, we're going to go ahead and create a new project. It's going to be an empty project. Click next. Uh, I'm going to name it Math Client, and then go ahead and click Create. And then we're going to do, we're just going to have one source file. Oop, not existing item. Uh, we're just going to have a single source file, main.cpp. And we're just going to include our IO stream uh, int main standard cout hello world return zero. Um, something wrong all right so we can go ahead and run it and we'll get hello world all right so now let's go dive into the properties so in properties uh, make sure that you're in all configurations or you can c customize this but for now I'm just gonna keep it in all configurations in all platforms um, technically you should 
uh, customize it for each platform that you build it. So there are four different possibilities, debug, x86, uh, x64, and release. You can, and then you combine those two in the, in the different ways. Um, and you would have to build four libraries for each possibility. Um, but that's just, that's just uh, necessary, but it all works the exact same. Um, for now, I'm just going to do all configurations in all platforms. So the first property we want to set is in C slash C++, go into general and find the property that says additional include directories. Now go into your file explorer and find the folder that contains mathlibrary.h. For me, it's just that folder. So go ahead and copy that. Oh. Uh, go ahead and copy that path and paste it in additional include directories and now we'll click apply and then okay so now we can include all those headers so if we go to include math library dot h uh, we had we can say standard c out add five and three uh, we can go ahead and say uh, print id and we can print ID again just to see that the static variable was incremented. And then we can generate a function. So function f is equal to function generate, and that's it. And then we can say f.print, just like that. Um, and if we go ahead and try and run this, this will not work. Uh, and we'll see why. It call, uh, The compiler calls this unresolved externals. Um, because we gave the header files to the compiler, but we did not give the source code. And that's where the DLL uh, file comes into play. Um, so to actually set the DLL and give the source code to the project, go back into properties, find linker, go into general, and in additional library directories, go back in your file explorer and find the directory that has the .lib file and copy that path and then paste it in additional library directories so and then click apply and then in, in input uh, for additional dependencies just add the name of the of the library so for me it's going to be math library dot lib and then add a semicolon and then click apply so we're, but we're not done yet because we still have that dll fi uh, file to actually worry about um, to include that we need to be able to copy it to the output directory um, and you might be wondering, why don't we just manually do that once? Um, well, we're not going to manually do it. We're going to tell the, the compiler to do it for us, so that in build events. Um, the reason why we want to do this automatically is so uh, we can have the most updated version of it. So if we changed uh, the full, uh, some source code and we forgot to actually uh, include, uh, copy the DLL over ourselves, we would get an error because there's no function definition. Uh, so in post build event, we want to go ahead and copy the DLL uh, file itself to the output directory. So the way we're going to do this is find the DLL pro uh, file itself, copy the path to it, and then in command line, uh, we're going to type in the command x copy backslash or slash y slash d, and then paste the path with the quotes around it. And then the second argument will be, uh, and then in quotes, uh, the macro out dir. So this essentially just copies the DLL file to the out direct output directory uh, that we currently have. So then click apply. Okay, and now when we run it, we get all these things here. Um, not sure why that is there. That might be something wrong. I'll I'll check that. Um, but you see that the static variable itself was incremented. So this demonstrates several things. So we have the extern function that adds five and three and returns eight. We were able to increment uh, the, uh, we incremented the static variable by one and you see that it changed. So the DLL internal state variable changed. And then we saw, and then we see all the uh, function statements here that allow us to track it. So yeah, that's how you create uh, and load a DLL or a dynamic link library uh, from a C++ project library to a C++ project.